Day 7. Time. Approximately 3 a.m. Location. Solaris Tunnel. Tunnel Town. Trigger Happy yawned and looked down at the filly who was playing peacefully on the command room floor. Puppy was moving a toy cart around while making noises with her mouth. She put a couple bottle caps on the cart and placed it next to an empty bottle of Sparkle Cola. Then dumped the bottle caps and replaced them with the bottle. I can have super special minty flavor? Okay, thanks, bye! The foal was quietly playing, as if she was worried about disturbing some pony with making too much noise. How can she be like that? Just ignoring all the horrible things she's seen and simply sit down and play like a common foal? Hey, little one, how's your friend doing? Puppy Smiles didn't look away from her toys as she answered. Don't know. She told me it might take a long time, but I have to wait here or it won't work. Now the filly was building some sort of fence around all the empty bottles using... Trigger raised an eyebrow. Say, why are you carrying around 9mm bullets with you? Oh, these ones? They're pretty and shiny. And it seems they're needed to use the nine male mintargon. Again, the filly didn't raise her eyes. The what now? Puppy waved a hoof and said in a loud voice, Noisy thing! A badly damaged 9mm semi-automatic pistol floated to her hoof, making Trigger step back and take cover behind a terminal. Hey, who gave you that? It's dangerous. Nah, it's just noisy. I don't like it very much. It seems like a colt toy to me. Maybe if it was pink. The guard mare smiled nervously. Yeah, puppy. It's not a very fun toy. Wanna exchange it for something? This gained Pumpy's unconditional attention. The filly's gleaming pink eyes stared at Trigger with expectation. Sure. What do you got? Uh, what about a cool pair of sunglasses? Yay! Sunglasses! N no wait. Puppy frowned. I can't use glasses because of this stupid helmet. Trigger face hoofed. Right. Sorry, little one. What was I thinking? The unicorn went back to digging around inside her saddlebags. What about an almost complete bridal gossip magazine? It's full of pictures of pretty ponies, and there are Glutershy photos, too. Puppy trotted to the guard, took the magazine, Looking at it for a moment, it smiled. I like this one. It's full of pretty ponies. Look at this one. I know her. She's Pinkie Pie. And this one's Rarity and... Ooh, look here. It's Rainbow Dash, too. I love, love, love Rainbow Dash. She's smart and super cool. And she can make the sky go boom. When I'm big, I'll marry her. I like this picture book. Gimme, gimme, gimme. Trigger tried to suppress a chuckle. I think we can call about that. Uh, but you have to give me the bullets, too. Ah, uh, okie dokie. And what can you give me for the big ones? Asked Puppy, retrieving a couple of the 88 flak AP shells from her inventory. The unicorn mare sighed. This was going to be complicated. Day 7. Time approximately 3 a.m. Location, Sugartop Cafe, Tunnel Town. Sugartop Cafe was dark and full of smoke as it usually was at that time of night. The place was largely deserted, a couple of drunk ponies nursing the dregs of their bottles, a griffin keeping to himself in one corner, and a pony with a guitar who was largely hidden beneath a sombrero. The bartender was already cleaning the floor with a bucket of dirty water and a mop that had seen better days. But Jammed Gun couldn't care less. Another! He weakly raised his empty glass rattling the blue straw sticking out of it, but it remained empty. Hey, son of a mule, I said another. Waving the glass faster didn't do the trick either. It was upsetting. The bartender, a silvery stallion with a black mane, trotted to the guard's table and put down a sparkle cola. Hey, big bro, keep it down, please. I've got clients sleeping upstairs. Shut the fuck up, Blackie, Mutter jammed, and fill the glass with something strong. I can't believe she dumped me. The younger brother sighed and pushed the spock of cola against jammed muzzle. 
Ah, oh, please, Jammy. Forget it already and go to bed. Look, you can use my place upstairs, okay? Just stop drinking. It's not helping you at all. The guard tried to look at his brother's face, but his head didn't want to move from the table. You know, the bar's half mine, right, Blackie? Yeah, but you only come here to mope about your life when I have to. Let's see, deal with the customers and keep it clear of the noisy whiners who drive away the few ponies that actually pay for their drinks. Black Hat stomped a hoof on the table. Honestly, Jammy, you can be a royal pain sometimes. Jammed Gun webbed a hoof, trying to shoo his brother away like an annoying fly. Uh, fuck off, Blackie. I feel like manure. I don't want you around. I want booze. I think instead of that, you should take a trot around the town, Jammy. Staying here won't make you feel better. Shut up. Eh, give me another wild Pegasus, Blackie. Jam says, raising his empty glass again, keeping his face on the table. How could she? At last, Black Hat snapped. Ah, oh, come on, Jammy. Let's get real. Happy, we're talking about here. The most bitchy mare I ever knew, Clop. Jammed Gun rubbed his right hoof as he looked down at the prone form of his brother laid out on the bar's floor. You know what, Blackie? You're wrong. Staying here made me feel better. Actually, a lot better. The stallion trotted outside. Thanks a lot, <clears throat> a little bro. Day 7. Time, approximately 3.15 a.m. Location, Solaris Tunnel, Tunnel Town. Say, puppy, how was Equestria 200, uh, before you left Canterlot? The filly frowned, trying to find a decent answer to the question. Greener. Oh, greener? Yep, Mommy was some sort of soldier, but she didn't actually go to war. She was good at fixing things, so she took me with her sometimes, since it wasn't dangerous. I've seen a lot of mighty fine places. A Peggy CC city, a flying field, a big place underground she called a stable. But it didn't seem like a real stable at all. It must have been in Ponyville and a lot of other places. And the filly stopped for a moment, pondering what she had just said. It must be somewhere else, because this big 52 every pony's talking about is not that great after all. There are no green hills, nor nice places, or pretty ponies full of happy ponies. Trigger felt a knot in her throat. You... you don't have to talk about that if you don't want. Puppy stared at the unicorn, a bit stumped. Why not? It's just like this place is not as nice as a lot of other towns I know. Maybe when I find Mom, I'll show you those pretty places too. Really, I don't know why you insist on staying here with a bazillion better places to live. Uh, sure. Why not? But in the meantime, can you please tell me something about Ponyville? Sure! It's the nicest, sweetest, colorfulest town I've ever seen. That's where Pinkie Pie lived before coming to Canterlot. Mommy had to do some work with some pretty ponies, and we lived there for a whole summer. It was full of friends, and there were trees and hills and super-duper colorful houses, and a place called Carousel Boutique. It wasn't a real carousel, but it was just a name. Puppy frowned. I'm telling this because when I asked why the carousel wasn't actually running in circles, every pony laughed and Mom hugged me and she was happy, but I felt a little stupid, so, uh, don't ask why it doesn't move, okay? Happy giggled a moment and nodded. Don't worry, I won't. And then there was a big digging in the middle of the largest apple farm I've ever seen, and there was a house in a cloud that was made like a castle but with rainbow waterfalls, and... and a shop with that sold quills and sofas. Puppy paused for a moment, studying Trigger's expression. Ah, uh, did I say something wrong? Why are you crying? I, I... I'm not crying. It's just something in my eye. Hello, fillies and gentle cults. P7 is here. Suddenly, all the screens in the room turned pink every one of them showing a logo of seven balloons tied together. Oh! Hi, Miss Voice! Thanks for coming! Puppy waved a hoof at the largest terminal where the balloons had been replaced by a sequence of command lines that chased each other across the screen. Thank you for finding my new home, Puppy. This is way better than the stupid dome where everything was falling apart. Let's see what we have here. 
Ooh, geothermal plants, maintenance robots offline. I can fix that. Oh, look at this. A lot of classified data and... Security red alert. How did I miss that in the first place? The voice paused for a moment. Something wrong, Miss Voice? Nah. I just need authorization from the big wig at Solar Sync. To suspend the alert, and but some pony already opened a back door in the program, so I can just exploit that. It'll only take a moment. Trigger was a little surprised. The mayor never liked robots much, but this one seemed friendly and Puppy knew it, so she decided to wait and see what happened. On the other side, Puppy seemed completely at ease. The filly sat in front of the big screen with her usual naive faith that everything around her was going to be all right. Okie dokie. Now, could you see if my mom is somewhere in this place? Puppy, please? No, oh, let's see. Red alert terminated. All systems green. Security doors opening in five, four, three, two... Oh, I don't know, puppy. This mainframe has a large database, and I don't think I can check all the entries because I don't have the authorization. Oh, wait. Ignore that. Right here. I found some protected files dated three weeks ago after day zero, but I need a passcode to open them. The filly raised a hoof. Oh, I know this one. Puppy smiles. Happy sighed. Now, puppy, your name can't open everything, you know. P7 interrupted the guard. Passcode accepted. There are two entries. I'm displaying them on the big screen right now. The filly in yellow looked at the writing and frowned as she tried to read it. It was simply too long for her to this time. Uh, can I have a little help? The unicorn mare sat at Puppy's side and put a hoof around her neck in a warm, tender embrace. Sure, little one. I'll read them for you, all right? Day 18. If I have the right to pray Celestia, I hope that those eggheads at Stable Tech did a better job than these, uh, mules. Yes, Puppy said it. It says mules at Solaris Inc. They succeeded in designing an emergency protocol that transferred all the priorities to the technical staff, but forgot to program the Sentinels so that they didn't kill every pony else in the spot. Um, this word doesn't actually mean anything, puppy. Let's move on. Anyhow, the Tunny is now safe. I'll camp here waiting for my crew a couple of days and looting anything else useful for the desert coming. Desert crossing. It's almost 2 a.m. and I can't sleep. I miss her so much. I know she's safe inside the stable, but I can still hear her calling for me because she's scared of the dark or because she had a nightmare. When I wake up and realize it's just a dream... Fudge. Yep, fudge. I have to keep busy or I'll lose my mind. I hate Equestria. Uh, <clears throat> this part's just a little prayer to the goddesses. Rainy Days. Trigger sighed. When Miss Rainy Days wrote this entry, she hadn't had her daughter in mind as the reader. Uh, well, it seems she headed south after all. Let's see if there's another record that has something more. P7's voice interrupted the two ponies. Hey, puppy. Do you remember the pass for Chief Sandbox, pretty please? The filly tapped on the helmet for a moment, thinking about it. Magenta? No, wait. Agatha! Thanks a lot, sweetie. I'd hug you super much. Let's do this. Hug yourself and pretend it's me. Here's your second entry. I'll be away a little poking my nose where I shouldn't. Have fun and don't mess around. Day 21. I'm finally ready to move. Apparently no pony is coming this direction. Maybe I'm the only survivor in the area. Not sure, but I don't want to test my luck. I'll take a detour around Sun City. The place was badly hit and lost uh, last night. I could see a discouraging glow in the desert. Exactly where the city should be. If I'm lucky, in a couple days, I'll be at Blue Feathers Airfield. I'm moving out at first flight. I'm back. I couldn't sleep again. Another nightmare. I can't stop dreaming of Puppy lying dead in the kitchen. Fudge, Puppy. Fudge? Do you like fudge? Okay, okay, I'm reading. These dreams. She is safe, I'm sure of it. She would never disobey me. Why do I keep dreaming of her? I found some pills, and I think that some of them could help me sleep. If the nightmare returns, I'll keep taking them. Rainy days. Puppy was hugging the guard mare, pressing her helmeted muzzle into Trigger's back. What's wrong, little one? She just misses you. Are you alright? When you find her, you'll see that you're safe and there'll be no more bad dreams, right? Telling such a sameless lie physically hurt Happy's heart. 
But Puppy needed all the encouragement she could get right now. I... I'm not a good pony, Miss Happy. I don't want... I, I didn't went to the secret place because I wanted to see the fireworks. The filly bawled loudly. I'm a bad pony. Mom will be mad at me. Trigger returned, the filly's hug, trying to reassure her. Now, now, don't worry. Your mom said that she was going south, right? To a place named, uh, Blue Feather something? I think that's what we call Rust Manor. It's easy to get there. Just head past Sun City. I'm sure that she'll be very happy to see you. Why am I giving hope to this poor creature? Her mother's long dead. What am I doing? Puppy looked at the mare, with those two large gleaming pink eyes now filled with hope. Really? Will she be there? I... I don't know. If she's still there. But you want to follow her steps, right? If you want to find out what happened to her, then you have to follow the trail as long as it's still fresh. Yes, Happy. Two hundred years fresh. The fool smiled again. Right. I arrived here with no problems at all. I can follow Mom anywhere. Thank you, Miss Happy. You're the best pony. P7 once again interrupted them. Very well, I'm done with the inventory. These guys at Solaris had quite a good grasp on the whole end of Equestria concept. This place is full of labs and storage silos with enough firepower to give the survivors a second show. Oh, and Puppy, I think you were trying to say Pinkie Pie. Puppy raised her head. What? Oh, it's quite simple, my little friend. Under the mountain here, there are levels and levels of warehouses, each filled with military equipment ready for use. There's enough firepower to kill every inhabitant of Equestria at least twice. Uh, and with kill you mean hurt very much? Asked the filly, doubtfully. Nopey mopey. I mean hurt way too much. Something like a party so big that no pony will be here to tell the story the day after. Uh, pink bot party? Asked Puppy, now afraid of the answer she'd receive. Pink bot, file not found. Puppy stopped for a moment to think. Okie dokie. What do these things do exactly? Let's give some examples. Multi-plasma long-range warhead. This baby can fit 50, or can hit 56 different targets with high-penetration self-propelled independent micro-missiles. Each missile can easily pierce the wall of a bunker and fill the inside of the plasma, raising the temperature by a couple hundred degrees, killing every pony within. The multi-port disruption generator dismembers every living target in a range of 100 meters. Obviously, this kills ponies. Chocolate Chaos is a magical energy gun that converts the blood of the target into chocolate milk. The effect is irreversible, and the blood returns to original state after about an hour. But the victim dies almost instantly after being hit. Puppy interrupted the list. Okay, okay, I, I got the picture. Well, what do you want to do with them? You're the boss here. With the computer's last statement, Trigger raised a hoof to try and stop the filly from saying anything stupid. But the mare wasn't fast enough. Dump it! Make a hole and dump everything inside. Build a house over the hole, and then move all the bully bots you have inside the house so nobody can ever get hurt. Well, technically everything's already in a big hole under the mountain. I can detonate the elevator shafts and the tunnels between the storage areas so that they'll be sealed forever unless someone digs the whole mountain away. Do it! Happy gave a long sigh of relief. Day 7. Time. Approximately 3.30 a.m. Location. Tunnel Town. Big 52. North Branch. Jammed gun hit the metal door to the tunnel with his head again. Fuck. I knew I had to stop her. Fuck, fuck, fuck. You know, Jammy, the door won't magically open just because you bucked it. Black Hat sat at the guard's side, still rubbing his right eye. I guess I deserved it somehow. It doesn't mean I won't give it back someday. Ah, oh, for Luna's sake, Blackie. Put that stake on your eye and go to bed, so I can mope in peace. The silvery stallion leaned on the wall and yawned. No can do. Can't leave Big Bro like this. Besides, I'm gonna be laughing at you for months over this. Jammed Gun snorted. I always suspected that our mother was a bitch. I'm sure of it. Happy's gone, and you think to laugh? You want another black eye, or this time are you trotting away in your hooves? Hey, cool down. Jeez. 
There's nothing you can do anyway while these babies stay cl- Uh? With a metal clank, the large door started lifting, sending Black Hat sitting on his haunches. What the fuck? The two ponies stared in disbelief at the gigantic metal bulkhead, a monster more than a meter thick rising into the tunnel ceiling. As soon as the first door was completely opened, a second pair of doors retreated into the tunnel's side. It took almost half a minute before Jam was able to speak again. Eh. Is this for real? Give me a pinch! Ah! You son of a ghoul! I said a pinch! Blackie snickered. I told you I owed you one. And you said she was dead for sure. The two stallions stepped into the tunnel, ignoring the skeletons. Black Hat went to a cart peppered with bullet holes, rummaging through its contents. Whoa. Look at all this stuff. Guess what? This town's getting its share at last. Jammy trod a little further, watching as the lights in the tunnel began to turn on and illuminate the immense length of six kilometers underground passage. A rope was dangling from an open ventilation grate in the ceiling. His trot became a gallop and he rushed deeper into the mountain. Hey bro, don't rush like that. We should call the other guards. Fuck the guards. I'm drunk and in love. The voice of the stallion echoed off the tunnel walls. Black Hat sighed and galloped after his brother. At least wait for me since I'm already here. Day 7. Time. Approximately 9 a.m. Location. Trade Station Tunnel South. Big 52. SC Branch. Trigger hugged Happy and kissed her on the helmet. The fool tried to break free with an annoyed expression. Yeah, smooches! Not in front of every pony! A dozen ponies had gathered around the filly in yellow. There were all the town guards and many other dwellers of Tunnel Town. A mayor that acted as local authority gave a speech and uh, a pouch of caps to Puppy before Trigger Happy accompanied her to the south end of the tunnel. In front of the two ponies lay an endless land of sand dunes, interrupted here and there by some red rocky formations. In the distance, it was impossible to spot the blurry silhouette of a city, but the sand and the wind made it almost impossible to tell if it was a town or some sort of natural formation. Very well, Puppy. We're here. That's Serpent Desert. Now, let me explain how to get to Rust Manor. Are you listening? The filly smiled and jumped in the air. Sure, Miss Pretty Happy. Very well. The desert is Sand Sweeper's territory. They're mostly scavengers that move a lot among the various camps, salvaging anything useful they find under the dunes. Usually, I'd warn you against them because they tend to do some robbery here and there, especially on lone travelers. But I don't think they'll try to rob you. The Sweepers are quite the superstitious tribe, and probably know about you from Lonesome Pony. Puppy nodded. Pretty ponies that rock around a lot. Okie dokie. Trigger smiled. Very well. There is a trail to follow. It's quite easy to see because every 50 meters, these Sweepers painted a red banner. You just trot from one banner to the next, and you'll be at their first encampment before tomorrow morning. Puppy frowned and pointed at the more inviting highway built on the solid bank and running south. Why can't I use that one? With my scooter, I'd be their lickety-split. No, little one. That highway leads directly to the middle of Sun City. You need to avoid Sun City at all costs. Why? It's a dangerous place. Every pony that goes there doesn't come back, and no pony knows why. Trigger's tone brooked no argument. But Puppy was not the most astute of audiences. Puppy tapped her helmet as if it was her chin. Ah, uh, maybe they like it so much that they don't want to go away. I... I don't think so, Puppy. When I was a fool like you, Sun City was the home of a tribe, the Rust Scrappers. They were allied with the Sand Sweepers since, well, a long time ago. Act anyhow, at some point it's said that the Sweepers found something big, but the Scrappers stole it from them. It was a big fight, something like a betrayal because the Sweepers tried to take the city in the night assault. The mayor paused to see if the filly was paying attention. And then what happened? Asked the little listener with a worried expression. During the assault, something completely went wrong, but no pony knows what. 
The only thing we know is that the sweepers went in with a, every gun they had and never came back. Every pony who tried to investigate the city disappeared, apparently devouring, uh, devoured by a secret. The sweepers said they didn't participate in the fight, mostly foals and elders, put together what was left of their tribe and carried on, trying to survive. Oh, so they were all bad ponies? Trigger frowned. In the wasteland, it's not as easy as telling good from evil, puppy. If you want to survive, sometimes you have to leave something behind, make sacrifices. Dying a little bit instead of dying completely. What? The foal gave Happy a puzzled look, unable to understand such a deep concept. Don't fret your little head, little one. Just think of it as, well, yes, that they were bad ponies, but they couldn't help it. Puppy shook her head. That's not true. If you're a mean to some pony, then you're mean. That's all. No excuses. If you begin to think like that, just because you're a little mean, then you'll end up super duper mean in no time. And you'll be a bad pony too. This... Did you think of this on your own? The unicorn guard stared at Puppy in admiration. Nopey mopey. Mom told me. Trigger patted Puppy on the helmet. Seeing her worried face. Don't worry. Robots don't count. Mommy won't be upset. Come on, show me a pretty smile. The filly in yellow smiled and jumped on her scooter. When I find Mom, I'll tell her that you have been nice to me. Thank you very much, Pony Happy. The foal launched herself down the road, gaining speed as she descended towards the desert. Wee! Trigger watched as the foal grew smaller as the scooter went off in the distance. I'm so sorry, little one. So... happy? Ghost or foal? Jammed gun trotted up to the mare's flank, smiling. I still don't know. The mare sighed. The only thing I know is that she's lost. Happy turned to look at the stallion and smiled a little. What about the black eye? Brotherly love. Jammy stated, before immediately going back on topic. And who isn't lost in this cursed world? As soon as the news spreads, ponies will head for Tunnel Town. We need more guards. Talking about that, the goods in the cart need to be recovered, stockpiled, and divided equally between every pony. Keep an eye on Black Hat. The stallion nodded, sighing. Yeah, don't worry. The others are already taking the carts into town. A couple of them are branded. There's a caravan of three carts from the water herders, and a cart that belonged to the gallopers. But it was salvaged by the ponies when they tried defending themselves from the sentries. Are we giving them back? We should. At least as an act of goodwill. If we show them that their goods were preserved, maybe this will help us later. Oh, and remind me to teach you how to restart the tunnel in case it shuts down again. Jemmy hesitated for a while. Well, <clears throat> uh, about last night. You know, when you ran off after the go, uh, puppy smiles, and I wanted to s you to stay. Uh, can we pretend that I said nothing about, well, you know what? Trigger Happy giggled. I don't think so, Casanova. That was the clumsiest confession ever, and I'm totally going to haunt you about it for the rest of your life. Jammed Gun groaned, lowering his head. Ah, uh, why did I even bother asking? May I ask you something now? The stallion waved his hoof. Yeah, sure, go on. Shoot me in the heart. Am I still in time to say that I love you too? Day 7. Time, approximately 4 p.m. Location, Serpent Desert. Big 52 SC Branch. Good afternoon, le fillies and gentle colts. This is Lonesome Pony, and you're listening to Radio 52. The only and best radio in this slice of the Equestria. Yesterday, I was walking in the street, and a mare just asked me, LP, how can you be so good on your program? Every pony here listens to you. Well, I must admit that it's not easy. But luckily enough, I'm the only fucking DJ around. 
A weak yay from a feminine voice interrupted the monologue. Bad LP. You use the F word. You can't use it. Now with our heroine listen to you. Right, right. I'm a bad pony and I should feel bad. Instead, right now, I feel just great. Guess why? You can't? Obviously not. Because I'm the first one with this treat on the table. Fresh from the wings of a friend of mine coming from the south. Hold your reins, little ponies, because this is big. At that point, the radio delivered a static charge and went mute for several seconds. But the static was soon replaced by the voice of Lonesome Poning laughing. Ha! I had you all. You fell for it. No pony can shut up Radio 52, and especially not today. Because today, we are celebrating the Tunnel Reopening! Yes, my little ponies, your ears are working. Tunnel Town is back in business. No more mountain pass and landslides. Boisterous, triumphant music played for almost a minute, with the DJ making guitar sounds with his mouth in the backgrounds. Best thing since the destruction of the carnival. And guess who did it? Oh, yes, our guardian angel, our little yellow ghost. We needed a foal to save us all from a horrible death from starvation. Bucks, now I'm depressed. No, seriously. In a week, this little devil has saved three towns from their worst nightmares. A foal! Come on, 52, raise your head and show some guts. Till then, I'll be here worshipping a way-too-few-years-old pony. There was a silent pause before the DJ came back on, tired and old. Wake up out there, everyone. She's just one pony. She can't save us all. We have so to save ourselves with what we got. We need only to be better ourselves. We don't need another hero. An acoustic guitar started playing with another song beginning, but this time it wasn't a record. The singer was Lonesome Pony himself. Out of the ruins, out of the wreckage. Can't make the same mistake this time. We are the children, last generation. We are the ones they left behind. And I wonder when we ever gonna change it. Living under the fear till nothing else remains. We don't need another hero. Wow, I really hope I find the superhero filly they always talk about. Do you think she'll want to be my friend? Puppy was trotting on the sand, following the red banners just like Trigger Happy told her to do. Affirmative. Usually a heroic figure is prone to be friendly. Warning. Mild radiation detected. Threat level. Negligible. The truly fa trot around a little while before hesitantly asking, Uh, Mr. Voice, do you think that I'm good? Will my mom still love me? Warning. This program is not designed for behavior evaluation. Puppy sighed with frustration. Jeez, you always hide from every important question, don't you? She was going to add something, but her attention was caught by a figure standing on a dune not far from the trail. Hey! Look! A pretty pony! The pretty pony consisted of an old unicorn with a white mane and a red coat, dressed in a mantle that covered her almost completely. Strapped across her back, she carried a long lever-action carbine. As the filly approached, the mare simply smiled. You took your time, little ghost. I have been waiting for you since noon. Hi! I'm Puppy Smiles! The filly smiled and waved her hoof. I'm sorry I'm late. Ah, uh, late for what? The slightest of smiles ran across the old mare's face before she replied. Well, for an adventure, of course. Little one, do you like adventure? Yush! I love, love, love adventure! Where is it? Can I have two? Suddenly, the foal's enthusiasm came to a halt. No, wait. I have to find Mom. I really shouldn't go adventuring. The old mare chuckled. Oh, right. You're already following a path. How could I have forgotten it? Puppy nodded. Exactly. So I'm sorry, but I have to go. Okay, thanks, bye-bye. And if I say to you that this adventure is about a friend of yours being in danger? The foal, who was already trotting away, but the mare's last words made her turn on her tail. 
A friend of mine's in danger? Who? Why? Where and when? Now, now. Don't rush in like... The puppy jumped on the elder's neck, pressing her helmet against her muzzle and staring straight into the eyes of the unicorn. Please, please, please tell me, please! The mare staggered, almost losing her balance. Calm down, little ghost. I was just telling you. Just sit down and listen, all right? Behave and I'll tell you everything. Ah, uh, yeah, right. Sorry, Miss Pretty Pony. Puppy let go of her neck and sat down in front of the unicorn who sidled her leaf. Very well. I'm long ears, and I'm a far seer. A unicorn that can see distant places and ponies. Puppy jumped onto her hooves. Ah, uh, can you see my mom? Can she see us? Is she okay? It doesn't work like that. The filly deflated, sitting down again as the unicorn continued. I take some medicin, and in my dreams I have visions. But I can't see choose what I see. Last night I had one of those dreams, and it was about you. Puppy sat down in silence, listening to long ears in the middle of the desert. You asked a very special friend a very important favor. Your friend did her best, but a really bad turn of events made it impossible for her to accomplish that task. So she appeared to me in my dreams, and I knew that you would be coming here. Puppy frowned. A friend she asked with a big favor for her? She didn't ask for... Here, Silky Tail. Look after Henrietta. Don't nothing bad happen to her. Henry? She's in danger? Where? The mare nodded and pointed a hoof towards the distant silhouette of Sun City. I'm afraid that Eagle flew too near to the sun, and she can't find a way to come back. Puppy hesitated. But Abby told me that I can't go there. I don't want to disobey her. Long Ears shrugged. You don't have to. You asked a friend for a favor, and she wanted me to warn you. That's all. You could simply choose to ignore her and go on your own way. One way or another, my task is over. But, but something bad happened to Henry. I can't leave her alone. She could be hurt. She, she could be crying. Well then, go to Sun City and save her. But I must warn you, Sun City is a trap. A bad dream made real. Once you start dreaming, you'll never be able to leave. Oh, don't worry. I'm not sleepy at all. Puppy smiled as if it was an easy thing. Space Captain Andromeda to the rescue! The foal galloped away, heading for the town behind the dunes. Long ears watched the filly in yellow running away until she saw a gray spot in the sand. Then she took a pill from her pouch and swallowed it together with a gulp of a milky potion. When the old mare blinked, she could see flames rising from the town and hear the sound of battle. What am I seeing? The past? Or the future? A giggle came from the mare's side. She's lively. Always smiling. I like her. If only more ponies were like that filly instead of being all grumpy faces. The mare whispered. Can a living nightmare bring peace? I'm not sure of this. Don't ask me. I'm only a vision caused by your massive consumption of hallucinogens. Really, I won't help you very much. The things will happen the same way even if you don't see them coming, and you can't even tell what's coming from when they've already happened. The old unicorn sighed. Maybe you're right. Let's go home. Yeah, let's go. That puppy can fend for herself. Footnote. Level up. Seven. New perk added. The power of metal. There are moments when rock is not enough. You inflict five additional damage with hand-to-hand -hand attacks. Yeah, rocks and power hooves are considered hand-to-hand -hand weapons. New quest perk added. Spirit of 52. Your legend is growing. You will have less low-level random hostile encounters as long as your standing with all the tribes is at least neutral.